Hi, so firstly to introduce ourselves, uh, we're Julie Clark and Rachel Kirk and we're based at Northumbria University in the northeast of England. Today we're presenting a brief overview of our paper looking at decision making processes around diversification, particularly in relation to moving into market rented provision that are taking place in housing associations, an example of a third sector organisation experiencing radical changes in their operating environment. Our paper is based on research that we conducted along with colleagues and was part funded by the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors Research Trust. The research involved an online scoping survey of housing associations operating in the northern regions of England and this looked at the extent and nature of market renting activity amongst the housing association respondents. We followed this up with a round table discussion with national and regional stakeholder representatives and semi-structured qualitative interviews with senior level housing association professionals from 17 organisations. In this paper we're focusing on the qualitative data in relation to the strategic decision making processes that were taking place in the organisations concerned. We'll be exploring if, how and why they were deciding to diversify or further diversify into the market rented sector. Housing associations provide the majority of social housing in the UK and have their origins either in the charitable voluntary sector or the public sector. They have evolved throughout their history, reflecting the shifting role of the third sector generally, and today they are operating in a radically altered and rapidly changing context. This research took place as the most recent funding and welfare policy reforms were posing significant questions for housing associations. Financial pressures as a result of external environmental change were intensifying existing trends towards commercialisation and diversification, raising considerations about the direction and values of organisations. Our research focused on a particular aspect of potential diversification, i.e. the provision of market rented properties amongst housing association landlords. This is an area of emerging activity that epitomises the context of strategic decision making facing the sector. A changing housing system with rising levels of market renting provides opportunities for housing associations and pressures to be more businesslike raises the possibility of cross-subsidisation, something that existing research based in London and the South East has identified. This research crucially took place in the northern regions of England, at a different set of local housing markets. Exploring insights into the processes of strategic decision making in this context adds to an existing debate about housing associations as hybrid organisations. What's the balance between business and social objectives? How are housing associations evolving in practice as social enterprises? And how is this being shaped? Are they reacting to external pressures or developing proactive internal responses? This research considers decision-making processes that have implications for the nature of the organisation and its role. In terms of deciding whether to invest, the local market was at the core of that decision-making process. However, there were significant influencing forces both external and internal to the organisation. Externally, the following forces were identified by respondents. There was an acknowledgement that they were operating in a national policy environment that on one hand was constraining their traditional activities through reductions in capital grant and restrictions on revenue raising. And on the other hand, it was creating opportunities for housing associations to diversify away from what were perceived as core activities. Local policy environments were also an essential element to the strategic decision-making process. Local authorities, as part of their housing strategy, could be encouragers or facilitators of housing associations' investment in the local private rented sector. In other instances, it was not part of their agenda. In terms of internal factors, organisational culture and values were seen as key to how the different housing associations responded to potential opportunities. In a number of cases, this reflected varying interpretations of the notion of social purpose, for example, redefining housing need. For some, a broader interpretation that reflected the inability of the local housing market to meet housing needs of households housing associations had not previously provided for, such as working families. In terms of business drivers, Organisational attitudes to risk also varied, again reflecting different cultures and values amongst housing associations. There were two fundamental business drivers for those that made the strategic decision to diversify into the private rented sector. These were the need to spread risk over a more diverse property portfolio, given the restriction on capital grant and revenue raising powers. 
there was also a recognition amongst respondents of the potential to cross-subsidise their traditional social housing functions from their commercial activities. Utilising organisational experience was another push factor for some. These housing associations saw their traditional development and management role as being transferable into the private rented sector. For others, there was the concern that the sector was very different and outside of their expertise. The same factors interacted differently for different organisations, and they could exert either push or pull forces, the outcome of which ultimately determined their interaction with the local housing market. Despite operating in the same national policy context, our research identified the potential for distinct approaches to strategic decision making. Diversity and complexity of individual housing associations was evident in what could be seen or perceived as a homogenous sector. To illustrate some of this diversity, we classified types of approaches that were evident among the respondents in our research. Enthusiastic early adopters were identified as having had strong drivers in place over a number of years. Their enthusiastic commitment was evidenced in their business strategies. Their proactive movement into the private rented sector was driven by mutually reinforcing cultural and business forces, as well as a supportive local context and market. For these organisations, pull factors were dominant. Amongst reactive pragmatists, both push and pull factors were exerting influences. For these organisations, the decision to become involved in private renting was a more recent development because of the nature and extent of external pressures. Often their commitment was on a small scale with a degree of uncertainty about long-term commitment. Deliberators were aware of the national environment and the pressures exerted, but unlike reactive pragmatists were still to make a firm strategic decision about their entry into the private rented sector. For reluctant pragmatists, their approach was one of a response to the immediate environment post-2008 which saw a housing market collapse. Their decision to enter market renting was temporary and reflected a particular set of circumstances. For some, it was their inability to sell properties that resulted in market renting, albeit temporarily, by default. So to summarise, our research demonstrated a more complex picture than might initially be expected. It was clear that housing associations were engaging or not engaging with market renting in different ways and for different reasons. The evolving nature of housing associations as hybrid social enterprises was evidenced by some organisations um, reshaping their culture and values, also the redefinition of social purpose within a more commercial environment, and also um, re reinterpretation of their organisation's role in a changing housing market. A deeper understanding of how as housing associations are interpreting and interacting with internal and external forces has potentially significant implications for how they continue to evolve in a constantly changing environment. Thank you.